Hello, my brothers and sisters. It's Justice Pariah here, and I saw the Sonic movie. On February 13th, I saw the Sonic movie. Now, if the title of this video wasn't obvious enough, this will be a spoiler-filled review. I'm going to share everything good, bad, and unexpected with this film. If you don't want that, then click off now. Got it? Good. Sonic opens as we saw in the trailer, with the rings around the Paramount logo, followed by the video games forming the Sega logo. I did props to the filmmakers for adding non-Sonic games to the intro. Not plot relevant, but I liked it. We see Baby Sonic, who really should be called Child Sonic because he's at least 5 years old in this film. I mean, he looks great, and I love the reference to Generations where the drift he does. Nothing really much to say on here. Though, the person he's giving the flower to is Dark Claw. Sorry, Amy fans. And honestly, the character serves her purpose well. She protects Sonic from the Echidna tribe like the loyal guardian owl she is before sending Sonic away to Earth using the Golden Rings, a nice reference to the special stages in Sonic 1. The story fast forwards 10 years and Sonic is hanging around Green Hills, the town from the trailer. Sonic looks just like he does in the trailers. Fantastic! James Marsden and his wife are introduced, and also, Sonic loves calling Tom Donut Lord because, as Sonic says himself, you talk to donuts and sometimes eat the ones that get on the line. It's not a bad nickname, and the moment where Sonic says this line doesn't overstay his welcome. There's a Sonic reference with this guy named Carl. He's pretty much a conspiracy theorist who is the only one who somewhat knows that Sonic exists up to this point. Oh yeah, Sonic is supposed to hide his power so no one goes after him. In typical Sonic fashion, he disobeys and uses his powers for fun. Somewhat. He's a bit responsible with his powers, actually, and making sure that no one sees him. Though he does like to have a bit of fun with people, hence Carl. Also, he picks up a turtle who almost gets hit by a car and has a joy ride with it. It's actually really funny. Sonic does give off his location at the baseball stadium after hitting the baseball, as seen in the trailer. But there's actually a good reason why. It's because he's alone after all these years, and he looks around in the stands and sees that he really is alone, and his emotions start playing with him. So he starts to run away from his emotions, but that blue lightning that we saw in the trailers? That's where that comes in, because that lightning is powered by Sonic's emotions. The more an emotion gets a hold of him, the more that lightning starts to empower him. Because he's so lonely, that lightning builds up as he's running around the baseball stadium. And that's what causes the power outage. Next, we get a scene of the military discussing what happened. Normally, this would be under the bad, because, you know, it's just the military, there's nothing really super important here, but it's less than a minute of the actual runtime of the movie, so it just kind of moves forward from, and eh, we know what didn't cause it to, hey, let's introduce Dr. Eggman. And Jim Carrey enters this scene, and his performance as Eggman as a whole is very entertaining as he gives a unique take on Robotnik. He comes off as a full of himself genius who's also somewhat quirky and a bit malicious. It's not the best Eggman ever, but it's still a joy to watch. Fast forward a bit and we get Sonic hiding from the military and Dr. Robotnik. Yes, he gets shot in the leg and does the uh meow thing. He drops his bag of rings here and they end up in San Francisco because he sees a San Francisco t-shirt on Tom's shirt. Yeah, the way the rings work is that they open wherever Sonic wants them to open. And because he was holding Route 1 before he said San Francisco, that's where it opens and that's where the bag falls. So despite the fact that these rings are pretty powerful, they're, they aren't used very much throughout the movie and when they are used they don't really do anything to like change the game. So props there. Tom puts knocked out Sonic in a cage and Sonic wakes up and easily opens it himself when his back is turned. Yeah. You think Sonic would shake on the cage or whatever, so it's actually kind of surprising that he just opens it. Yeah, but hey, that's just me. Tom and Sonic talk before Sonic hides in Tom's attic, and from this point on, they're working together. 
A funny moment happens here when a Robotnik arrives on the scene and says he's Badniks. Yes, they are called Badniks in this film. That's a good thing. But the Badniks appear in Tom's house, and two enter through the attic window in the roof. Sonic disguises himself as an actual ball amongst, like, other sports balls. He's, like, got a basketball beside him or whatever, and he's just hiding among them. It shouldn't be as funny as it is, but hey, got me, so. Tom punches Robotnik, Sonic jumps on top of Robotnik, and the two heroes leave in Tom's truck. This leads to one of my favorite Jim Carrey moments as his assistant, Mr. Stone, arrives not five seconds after Sonic leaves and enters to check on Robotnik, who ridicules him for not going after Sonic. I love this scene as it calls out the idiocy people have in situations like these in movies. Yeah, it calls out something that this film is doing, but the joke still hits its mark. Sonic also runs when Tom tells him to beat it, and he comes back with a fish on his head after a quick spill in the Pacific. So yeah, that's why Sonic doesn't run all the way there. Also because he admits that he has no idea where he's going, but hey. There has to be a logical way, and the movie did it. Sonic has his night at the bar, as we saw. There's a Quicksilver scene here that is of course in the film because of speed. As cliche as it is, it is quite enjoyable to see Sonic causing mayhem like the speedy troublemaker he is. Also, Sonic and Tom make a bucket list for Sonic since he's going to leave the planet. Most of it is just things to do in the bar, but Sonic writes one thing that ties in later. Sonic and Tom lay low for the night, and Sonic does the shower thing from the trailer. I actually really enjoy that, it's kind of funny. The one, it's the one scene all of us will never forget. Sonic crashes, and Tom reads that one of the things Sonic wants to do is make a real friend. This would be in a case of show, don't tell, which is something you shouldn't do in films. But in this case, it's not for the audience. We already know that Sonic's looking for a friend. He feels it. We know he's alone. We've already felt that. This isn't for us. This is for Tom and his important film. So, yeah. I'm sorry, but this section is not on long enough, so I'm just going to go into quick fire round. I didn't plan on this, but I'll be here all day otherwise. Jojo giving Sonic his plastic sneakers. The reference to Unleashed with a slide under the truck near the end. Green Hill's theme plays on the next to last scene. Sonic references Fast and Furious. Sonic calls Robotnik Eggman. Jim Carrey's classic Eggman and the fact that it's not a post credit scene. Double points for that because I really thought it was going to be. The trip across the world. Sonic does the smash pose during the Eggman fight. And of course, Ben Schwartz's overall performance as Sonic. And so much more than I'm probably forgetting. Though, here's the part I'm most excited about. In the mid-credits scene, which is directly preceded by Sonic credits where 2D Sonic runs past areas inspired by the film and featuring the theme song by Wiz Khalifa, another Sonic character appears. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Tails is in the movie! I cheered in the theater when I saw this, and I know I was too loud because a kid repeated exactly what I said. I don't care. The fox is in the sequel and the voice is perfect. If you told me that Colleen O'Shaughnessy did the voice, I would believe you. It really is that good. Okay, this movie wasn't perfect. Neil McDonough? You know, the guy from Arrow Season 4 who shows up in that scene where Eggman's introduced? Yeah, that's the only scene he's in in the film. I guess he's not too important, but still, it just... Okay. Sonic flosses, I get it. It's a kid film, and it only happened twice, but one time replaced the dance he did in the trailer after beating the egg tank thing. I wanted to see that! That was awesome! That was a good reference to the classic games, and they ruined it just so they could get a Fortnite reference in there. Also, another thing I really hate is that there are two fart jokes in the film. And I'm really not a fan of these cheap excuses for jokes. There are times when they're used well, and times where they're not. Admittedly, because there's only two, it's not too bad, and one of them is the baseball scene, which you can't even really call it a fart joke, because that's just something that's going on. And the other time is right after Sonic does the shower scene thing. There's a fart joke that leads into a comment about what Sonic ate, and he references chili dogs. I mean, I like the Chili Dog reference, but at the same time, we saw it earlier when he was doing the Quicksilver scene because he grabbed five Chili Dogs at once and just ate them all because he loved them. This wasn't necessary for the film. I'm sorry, it really wasn't. 
I mean, it's not the worst fart joke in the world, but it still rubs me the wrong way. Also, the ending of this film is pretty cheesy, with Sonic almost dying and then Tom and Misty a friend and Sonic revives with lightning at full power. Yeah, it looks visually pleasing, but it feels so predictable and cheesy. Come on, do you really think they were going to kill the main character? Eggman wasn't even bald yet at this point, and we saw from the trailers that he was going to be. We knew Sonic wasn't dead. In addition to the fart jokes, the reason for that bag scene, you know, where Sonic is stuffed in a bag and they have to go to the top of the tower, is because they need access to get up there because apparently Sonic can't run up the side of the building. But then later on in the movie, after he gets up there, he runs down the side of it to, to throw a ring to save his friends. So, what was the point of that? Just so we could have them up there as well? I mean, what? Like Sonic couldn't have run up there, grabbed them, and just came back to say goodbye? I mean, yeah, the scene works its way for the film, but honestly, it's just something that stuck out to me. Also, the ending of the movie has the military see Tom and his wife as the good guy, Sonic as the good guy, Dr. Eggman out of there. But the thing is, Dr. Eggman worked for the military. What, does the military now think just because Sonic's good and he didn't... He wasn't a threat to America that things are good now and that Dr. Eggman was really the good guy? Honestly, this could have been explored so much better, but I guess they had to write it out. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but still, it's just something that has me a little curious. I know, I thought the bad would be longer too, but here we are at the unexpected. This movie's PG rating comes from a reference to drug dealers, and that being the only reason payphones are around, so somebody better call the doctor. Jim Carrey says a minor swear word to Tom, and Tom almost says a bigger swear word to Eggman before being punched and cut off. Sonic also pushes Tom and his wife off the building where he fights Eggman. I don't think anyone saw that coming. The Sonic movie has its fair share of pros and cons, but I honestly thoroughly enjoyed the film. I know this isn't saying much when it comes to video game movies, but this may just be the greatest video game film yet. It's by no means perfect, no film is, but it did its job. After the film, I wanted to go home and play a Sonic game. I went into this film with low expectations, thinking it would be a 2.5 star film, 3 at best. And I was honestly surprised that I would give this film 3.5, heck, maybe even 4 out of 5 stars. Maybe it's because this Sonic movie feels so much like Sonic that the bad gets forgotten among the stuff I love. I had a blast, guys, and I will await the sequel and the DVD release of this film. So, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this review. Thank you for watching. Have a God-blessed day, everyone.